welcome to the first episode of Forging Ahead. I'm Aviv Manoach and this is a show about tabletop role-playing games where I discuss the shenanigans of my home group and prepare for their next adventure. You can join me each week live on twitch.tv slash isol.me or subscribe to the podcast audio on dwarfcast.net. Um, this is the first episode. Hello, thank you for listening or watching. Uh, in this show, what I'm going to do is talk about my home group. We are, I'm going to tell you what we are playing, who are our characters, um, and I'm going to try and prep for our next session or couple of sessions or figure out what exactly is going on. Uh, if you want to join me in the chat in the next sessions, uh, you can do so on Twitch, and if you are, if you like to listen to it in a later date, you can do that too. Who am I? My name is Aviv, like I said, I have been gaming for the past, wow, um, 20 years, more or less, 18 years. And um, since about 10 years ago, I started to try and make my hobbies into a profession. Uh, not only in writing games and publishing games, but also uh, in uh, production uh, of media. I've uh, been um, employed in the advertising industry. I have been um, making podcasts and uh, uh, live videos, and I've been uh, part of the on the shoulders of Go- <clears throat> part of the on the shoulders of dwarves team for the past several years. Uh, we ran. A crowdfunding together, we run a couple of uh, a gaming live stream together, and generally I'm the guy that uh, when you need something te- technical done, you call me. Uh, you may have heard me for time to time on the show, I've been uh, in the latest uh, episode uh, 45 with Uri, where we talked about a player missing uh, um, sessions. And... Um, uh, on that episode, I talked about my game, uh, my home game, which is, uh, it's, it's strange to call it a home game because uh, we are playing in uh, text chat, uh, in Discord. Um, <clears throat> specifically, each week we have a session on Fridays and uh, all my players and I join a, a Discord server and we have a couple of channels where we do our thing. Uh, and I have um, one of the viewer, um, or one of the listeners rather, um, emailed us afterward and asked a couple of questions about uh, how I run the game and what were, and how the old text uh, chatting works. And I actually wrote a, a rather lengthy post about it. So if you're interested in the technical aspects of how uh, I run the game, I will put a link in the show notes, and you can read all about it. Uh, okay, so what are we playing? We are playing a game called Wonders Heroes of Tomorrow, which is an adaptation of Masks, a new generation by, uh, by uh, Magpie Games. Like Masks, you, we play a group of teenage superheroes uh, that are caught in this conflict between uh, wanting to help people and wanting to come on their on their own as uh, heroes and uh, outside, not really outside, but the other people in the world uh, telling them how to do things and what to be, and sometimes um, try to stop them from being the heroes they are trying to be. Now, in Masks, you have a specific setting called Elsion City, and uh, which is um, a very classic uh, superhero comic book setting that had uh, heroes presenting the world for the past almost 100 years. And there were the superhero generation, the gold generation, silver generation, and so forth. Um, and that's one way uh, to play the game. 
Now, Mag Magpie Games have since published uh, several different playsets. Uh, they are calling them that present with different other scenarios uh, that you can use in your home game. Uh, what we did with Wonders is um, writing or rather uh, repurposing um, a system from uh, the Fate role-playing game that allow you to create your own urban environment to play with. Uh, we have a central premise. The premise is that in, in the Wonders world, um, people only found out about uh, people, other people having superpowers about 10 years ago. Uh, there, are, there were always people with powers, but they were uh, in the shadows, hidden, uh, trying to do things behind the scenes, a, a type of masquerade-like thing. Uh, but 10 years ago, there was a war called the War of Might. And something happened that revealed the existence of superpowered people to the general public. Now, as part of the uh, city creation rules from Wonders, the group decide what this event was and how it affected uh, the people of the world and specifically the heroes of the world. So in, in our game, um, the campaign is titled, as you can see, Collecting Dust. It's a pun, I'm not going to explain it, it's, it's an inner joke thing. But um, we decided that there were a malfunction in the Large Hadron Collider. You can look it up, it was a real thing in 2008. And this malfunction caused a, um, a fissure to op open up in a part of Israel where we live. Uh, and this, uh, the, um, the fissure caused all kinds of problem, problems, and one of, one of which was um, outsidery, horrory, um, Lovecraftian things escaping from another dimension into our world. This require, required the uh, cooperation, excuse me, um, of the superpowered individuals of the world to come together and stop them. And they did that. Um, they did, they stopped the uh, invasion from the fisher and afterward uh, an international uh, agency was founded to um, secure the fissure and they built a prison called the Boar uh, around the fissure that um, after enacting uh, laws about uh, people with powers, um, s uh, they are imprisoning the, um, the individuals that break those laws in the Boar to keep fighting the uh, things that uh, are trying to escape from the fissure. Uh, so our city is located about 10 kilometers from this fissure um, outside the international demilitarized zone um, and I have here a, a nice map of the city uh, that if you are watching the video version you can see. Uh, it's not a big city. Um, I, 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 I don't know how to... Um, compared to international uh, other cities, but the, it has about 40,000 uh, people in it. Um, and, <clears throat> and as part of um, the, the um, game creation, we also, beside the backstory and um, the, um, the, the city itself, we decided about uh, several key locations that exist in the city, as well as uh, several key figures that um, our game is going to uh, revolve around, at least in the in the earlier stages. And, okay, so before I move on to tell you about uh, some of the plot elements and what I'm thinking, I will uh, introduce the character and the selves. Uh, we started with four players, but uh, we had a player that had to leave in the next, in the last session, and we got another new player. Uh, so we had um, three characters that uh, are with us from the beginning, and another character that was introduced in the last session. The characters are Oron, the Nova, uh, with telekinesis and telepathy powers. 
He was uh, taken by the military at the age of six or seven, six, five or six rather, and because he was considered the strongest telepath in the entire country, and so um, he was placed under uh, state supervision and got into a um, specialized program and generally uh, the, the um, government is really afraid of him so they are trying to keep a um, close watch on him they started to change in uh, since the beginning of the game uh, because he joined the team he's less uh, reliant on the government assistance he received and w- it's it's also part of the of the plot we we started to to play uh, Amrafel the Janus uh, has supernatural sense and, uh, senses and impossible mobility. A uh, couple of years ago, he uh, cu- was caught in a battle uh, between uh, some other hero and uh, entity from the Fisher, or rather, someone affected by an entity from the Fisher, and uh, it um, he got caught in some kind of blast or energy wave and got uh, shape-shifting powers uh, that he transformed between normal um, human people person uh, (laughs) form and a a kind of blue beast uh, um, James Cameron avatar-like form. Uh, This is uh, this player's take on Dianos instead of instead of having like a proper um, costume he switches between between the forms, and while he's in the um, hero form, the Amrafel, uh, he has his senses and mobility. He can uh, climb wall and jump, uh, great distance and stuff like that. Um, on the one hand, it's kind of um, there is two sides to to this kind of, uh, uh, to to his character because. Generally, you want the Janus to have a costume because the story of the character revolve around uh, people finding out who is beneath the costume. Um, but if if we take a, a classic Janus example like Spider-Man, Peter Parker has all his powers even when he's not in costume. So if there is a dangerous uh, situation, he can do something about it. That's not true about Amrafel. Uh, Amrafel cannot use his powers when he's not uh, in his hero form, and it, ta- it takes a bit of time for him to to change. It's not instantaneous. So that's that's the limitation from uh, one side we put on this character, and also a kind of advantage because he he technically doesn't have a custom. But I told the player that if if the need arises, we are going to, to stretch and, and to check the limits of his sh- uh, shape-shifting. Uh, does wounds appear on his body after the hero form is hurt, for example? Uh, is there a way for the villains to snap him out of the hero form? Another question. We are going to play and find out. Uh, the third character that uh, that started the campaign is the Flying Fist, uh, called Tom. She is the beacon uh, with martial arts and acrobatics. Uh, technically, she has very um, very minor air control powers that she uses to um, uh, in order to fight and do the acrobatics thing. So uh, um, she she taught herself how to. Uh, use those air powers in order to um, to fight and jump around and do all kinds of crazy things. I just realized I didn't change the title. Never mind. N- not right now. Uh, okay, and the and the last character that uh, joined us in the last session is Seabreeze, the outsider. Um, she has stunning beauty and radical shift changing. She is uh, an, a, an entity from a virtual world that somehow uh, entered our reality. Uh, we play this uh, scene, uh, the players at the beginning of la- last um, 
yesterday's session. Uh, they are walking at night in, in an alley and um, the, the uh, moon turns purple and there are lightnings and some kind of weird ship-like thing uh, appears in the middle of the road and sh- sh- shapeshifters sh- shapeshifters uh, into a garbage um, bin, like a, a big container-like uh, garbage bin, uh, because she, uh, the the character has the move Kirby Craft, and uh, she took the um, Chameleon Circuit, or I don't remember the exact name of it, um, as, as one of the powers, so the the craft can. Um, uh, chameleon plating, chameleon circuit is, is a Dr. Hooding. Uh, so the craft can um, appear as something um, more normal, let's call it that. And the character itself is also, his is original form is also very alien, but because of its radical ship, shape shifting, uh, she could transform and become more human like. So we had this whole scene about. It appearing out of thin air and the character are very afraid of it, but it, the it, Seabreeze changes form to be more human-like and they, they start asking her questions and she doesn't know where she is because she didn't even know there were, there were anything, there was anything outside of her uh, virtual reality. And we are going to explore the, the place where she comes from in, in the future. The, uh, those are uh, those are our, our cast, and uh, for the <clears throat> last bit of the of the show about Termis, I will talk about the uh, overarching uh, story elements we already established, and uh, a bit of my um, planning for the future when we <clears throat> when. We wrote the um, how your team came together. It was established that um, the first time they fought together, they uncovered some sort of government conspiracy to abduct a very uh, high-profile wonders or, or heroes um, in the city. Uh, and they prevented um, the, the abduction of one of those heroes. Uh, fought a couple of uh, dangerous enemies, trashed a part of the city museum, stuff like that. In our first session, they uh, infiltrated, <clears throat> they infl- infiltrated a, a radio station that was taken over by another high-profile wonder called Star Power. And Star Power, like them, uh, stumbled upon this conspiracy because he himself uh, was the victim of uh, an an attempted abduction. And so he was sure that uh, the government tries to um, hide the fact that uh, a bunch of those um, wonders are are being kidnapped by, by government officials. This... Um, this comes together with another things we establish in the backstory of uh, the Flying Fist that her, her brother, uh, which actually has very strong uh, wind manipulation powers, was taken by the government, uh, by, in, by the international uh, force that is controlling a superpowered individual in the world called Seraph. And, uh, and so from the perspective of the characters, um, there is something very wrong. People are being taken from the streets, but uh, nonetheless, they stopped uh, Star Power from actually blowing up the uh, radio station, uh, and afterward, he disappeared. And now, this is the the grand scheme of things, and we actually didn't touch of any of that since the first session. Um, I'm what I'm trying to do with this campaign is um, 
to actually strengthen my weakness in writing side, uh, side stories. Because in most of my campaigns, I have, uh, I'm, I'm, um, <clears throat> I have very intricate and, and well-made um, story arc that, that go through the entire campaign and um, they, they come to, to a, a nice uh, closing at the end and the, and the group enjoys them. But my, my weakness is in writing smaller, more specialized, more uh, character-driven uh, side stories. So that's, this is what I'm trying to do uh, for this game. Uh, I'm, I, I'm <clears throat> my idea is to take an element from each one of the characters and um, make... Um, some kind of, of story thread around it. So, um, Oron, for example, for the the first um, in the first session, uh, the the player decided that while he was trying to get to the radio station, uh, the van with uh, the squad that was accompanied him uh, got into a car accident and they were injured or hurt or he thought even dead. But when he got back to the base, he found out that there, were, there wasn't a car accident. They, the, the entire squad just disappeared. And the, the official statement of the matter is that they went AWOL. They just uh, uh, took, took their gear and left. But he is sure that he, was, he witnessed a car accident and he doesn't know why. So this is this is one of the thread we are going to um, to investigate. Uh, another thing um, is that uh, Amrafel has a close friend called Alex, and her mother is a um, researcher in the um, antiquities department. There were there is a, a large dig site in the city. Uh, about, um, of, of ancient Canaanite um, artifacts and she works there and, so, and Alex tells Amrafel that she f um, li uh, heard her parents talk about uh, tags that threaten her um, to give them one of the artifacts uh, they dug up in the, in the dig site and Alex while she she doesn't approve of Amrafel using his powers and uh, going uh, into the city and fighting people uh, because she's very worried about her mother. She asks him to um, go and try to look out and find out what's going on. And that's uh, one of the things we played in the last session. And uh, he heard them talking with her mother about something called the, the, the tablet of Anat. Uh, which is something they heard about in another scene, and her mother was very uh, protective and aggressive, and stood her ground against the the tags. Um, he also found found out that the tags themselves are uh, employed by a character they met uh, in one of the previous session called Rave, uh, which. Um, <coughs> which organizes uh, um, I call it a club because yeah because it's based on fight club it's in an underground fighting club for a uh, super powered people um, people come there and fight to prove their mental stuff and uh, the, the team heard rumors about this in school and are trying to find uh, this club because they think um, it could lead them uh, to a new lead uh, um, to find star power. So we have the uh, Oron uh, memory, uh, um, memory accident uh, plotline and Amrafel um, um, I, I forgot the, the word I'm trying to say. Amrafel's uh, uh, antiquities um, antiquities dig site plotline, 
And the entire party is involved in the uh, trying to find the fight club, um, uh, the fight club, the underground fight club uh, thing plotline. <coughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, I don't really have a specific idea for the flying fist yet. Uh, so far, she's just part of the of the general um, general uh, story of the other character. But uh, since since uh, the the discipline from a brother is is part of a, a backstory, she may be she she will maybe be tied up to the to the bigger storyline. I I will have to think about that. The the next episode we we because this episode was so much about introducing the backstory and what we are playing and the, the introducing the show is, in itself. Uh, I'm going to do le less prepping. In the actual episode, and more in more talking in general terms. But uh, what we have on the table right now is fi finding the uh, the Fight Club, um, where they investigating the location. A um, couple of sessions ago, they ran into um, a new um, a, a new person that they, they didn't know. They didn't. They haven't uh, met before. Called Hexen. Uh, with some powers they don't understand. Hexen herself uh, seems to be looking for this tablet of a nut. So now uh, there are two separate groups that try to find find this tablet. And ho all the, um, that the party knows is that uh, it's uh, a clay tablet um, supposed um, to be written about uh, a story called the Bar Cycle. The Bar Cycle is a, a Canaanite a mythological um, epoch, uh, a real thing. You can look it up on Wikipedia, but uh, of course the party doesn't know uh, why uh, um, the, those people are looking for it. Um, but um, the, my my idea is for the upcoming uh, one or two session is that uh, they are going to f to uh, find and participate in the fight tab, and this is going to be a uh, um, nexus to tie up uh, some of the other plot line. They are going to see a uh, part of the of the crew uh, of Star Power. They are going to find uh, some of the of the crew that uh, works with Exen. Um, a lot of the of the plot lines are going to intermingle and they tie together in in this scene at the Fight Club. And we will see what's happening after that. After that, so this is this is um, <clears throat> this is the end of the of the show for today. Um, in the next uh, episode, I'll catch you up on what happened in uh, with the group in the gaming session, and uh, we'll discuss how to proceed. I specifically want to find um, to to create to think about. Uh, plot lines, specific plot lines for the Flying Fist and Starbreeze. Uh, I have a couple of the ideas of what to do with Starbreeze. I think uh, I think of using some villain to try to uh, bring stuff from the virtual world into our reality, uh, stuff like that to 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 mix between the two realities. I think that will be fun. Uh, in the meantime, you can catch uh, uh, catch me on Twitter at Icel. Um, check out more of my games on the uh, uh, Vano Games to Amaze page on Facebook, and of course join the On the Shoulders of, of Duos community uh, on Facebook as well. Thank you for listening or watching. I hope to see you next time. Uh, goodbye for now. Have a nice day.